It is time to finally add the kiwis to the wonders of Oceania in the Elm Hill City Zoo. Today we will build an indoor nocturnal habitat for those guys and a little outside section as well as add another nocturnal animal from Oceania, the common death adder. Hello guys, this is Caesar Creates and welcome back to my channel. In this episode of the Elm Hill City Zoo, we will add the North Island Brown Kiwi to the wonders of Oceania, the newest building in our zoo that I created especially for the release of the newest Oceania pack for Planet Zoo, uh, and it will house or it houses three different animals from this pack, uh, the Tasmanian Devil and the Quokka that we already added, and now it is time to add the third one, the Brown Kiwi. So many of you asked for a Kiwi habit and we are finally building it. Uh, of course, building for kiwi comes with some challenges because it is basically a nocturnal animal, so we need to have that in mind while building a realistic or a semi-realistic habitat for it. And this is something that I had in mind from the very beginning of creating this building uh, and this is actually why I decided to build this building because I knew that I had to have the kiwi somewhere indoors uh, to create a nocturnal like uh, an enclosure for it. Our kiwis in the Elm Hill City Zoo will actually have the uh, outside and the inside section of their enclosure. Uh, the uh, inside section will be actually a proper nocturnal exhibit where I focused on uh, you know the guests being able to see them at, at night. So so they will simply walk into this little like section or a little like room uh, called the Oceania Night, uh, and in there there will be actually two exhibits: one for the kiwi and one for the common deaf adder, uh, because the common deaf adder is another animal from uh, from Oceania, from Australia that is nocturnal. Nocturnal. Don't worry, we'll still add this animal to the reptile house, but I really wanted to have an exhibit in there uh, because. I had this perfect space for an exhibit so I decided to add the deaf adder and in the end I am so happy that I did because it looks so so nice with those two enclosures in there. Uh, basically the guests will step into a very dark room. To achieve this we will of course have to you know uh, while doing the cinematic shots or by while doing our tour around this building we will have to change the day uh, to the night in the game because uh, you cannot have this like complete darkness uh, in the during the day in Planet Zoo, even if you will, you know, completely enclose the space with walls, there will still be some light. It won't be completely dark. Uh, but of course, we'll somehow, somehow cheated by changing the night, the day to the night. Uh, and I only added some like uh, you know those red lights that are so typical for um, for nocturnal houses and closures and so on. Uh, basically, the red light it doesn't harm uh, the vision of the nocturnal animals and they don't pay too much attention to the red lights. That's why the red lights are often used in enclosures like this. Uh, so yeah, the zoos basically in, in cases like that, they try to, you know, like change the animal perspective of the day and night. Uh, so the, uh, the enclosure is completely dark during our day. So they think it's night. There's on, there are only those like red lights somewhere so you can actually see something being uh, like you as a guest. Uh, while you know observing those animals and so on and during our night they are you know turning the lights on in there so uh, that the animals think that it is actually a day and they go to sleep uh, so this is how it is typically done at zoos of course those lights that would be turned on during the night so the animals think it's the day it is quite confusing we'll have to have some you know uh, UV like lights or UV uh, I don't know how to call it rays or or anything like that for the plants to actually grow. Uh, I know that zoos are often also using those special like light bulbs uh, that you know help the plants to do their photosynthesis and stuff like that. I am not an expert on that but I know that such lights exist uh, that basically fake the sun and the sun rays. So this is all that we have to imagine for this uh, indoor exhibit. Uh, we are actually building the indoor exhibit indoor part first in this video. Normally I'm doing the 
uh, outdoor sections first and then I am moving indoors. Uh, but I just thought that the indoor section is actually more important in here for this uh, particular animal, for this habitat. So I decided to focus on it first. The outdoor section, I don't really know if it makes sense. I saw some outdoor section for sections for the kiwis, but to be honest, uh, if you know, if the kiwi, if for the kiwi, the day and the night are just changed completely. So if, if the animals think that it is night during our day, so if it will step out outside, it will be so confused because it will be suddenly a day for them. Because of course we cannot make the outdoor enclosure completely dark during the day. It doesn't make any sense. But I still saw some enclosures like this. So maybe the kiwi is uh, out there during the dawn and the dusk. You know, some zoos are open a bit longer. Some zoos are the, even provide those uh, night tours that you can go into during the night. So maybe the, then the kiwi will be outside. I don't really know. But uh, I thought that it would be just fair to give it an outdoor uh, enclosure, just as we did with those other animals in this building. And I wanted them to have a little, you know, outdoor so they can go and fresh with some fresh air and so on. That's why I did it. And I simply also think that it looks cool when the habitat has like an outdoor area. But I don't know. I don't know if it makes sense. You guys can comment down below if it does or it doesn't. Uh, I decided to make the end outdoor enclosure just because I saw that uh, kiwis sometimes have those in zoos in Australia and also I think some European zoos. So yeah, that's that was my reasoning but we are focusing mainly on this uh, out indoor part and we are trying to make it work make it look nice uh, and you know it is actually a struggle to make a pretty looking nocturnal habitat because it basically it's dark so you lose a lot of uh, different details you need to uh, plan this correctly you might actually notice that the speed builds today for this and uh, indoor enclosure is a bit slower because I always think that uh, uh, you know, a very speed, very quick speed build inside of those very tiny spaces can get a bit dizzy, uh, can get hard to follow and so on. So today you are getting a little bit like a slow down version of what I normally do. So it will be probably easier for you guys to, uh, you know, follow uh, the speed build because of this, the video is a bit longer, but I'm not mad at it because I think that maybe you guys will be able to learn more. Maybe you'll find something that you, you know, missed in my like uh, recent uploads and talking about the recent uploads actually what I wanted to say is thank you for the amazing response to the last videos when it comes to both the Tasmanian Devil and the Quokas the videos have more than 10,000 views so it is amazing for my channel so thank you guys so so much I am so so glad that you are enjoying those videos and you like my idea for this building and and so on so Thank you, thank you, thank you, uh, and warm welcome to all the new uh, people who joined recently because we had some new subscribers coming, joining, and so on. So thank you guys so so much, and also another thank you because I had some people uh, like becoming the members of the channel recently. So thank you guys for that. This means the world to me that you want to support me a little bit extra. All those funds and the support, uh, I would just use it for the development for improvement of my channel uh, in ways like graphic design or animation and so on so thank you guys so so much because you are greatly contributing to my growth on youtube so uh, again thank you thank you and thank you okay but coming back to today's habitat because we have some new things that i am doing here for the very first time. As you guys can see, this intersection for the Kiwi is not like maybe the smallest, but it's also not the biggest one. Uh, I just simply wanted to make it look realistic. So I wanted to make it look cozy. I wanted to make it look like something that you would see in a zoo. Uh, sometimes when it comes to the indoor enclosures in Planet Zoo, you, there is a risk of making them simply too big. Uh, and if I am trying to make this building 
realistic. I just had to pay attention to the uh, to the dimensions of this uh, of this enclosure. That's why you at some point saw me lowering the ceiling a bit because I just thought that it looks weird being so high. Uh, and uh, yeah, what I did was simply elevate the back of it a bit, like the terrain, uh, to make this like really cool perspective into the habitat. And I put the the burrow for the animals up there in the back. So th there is something that you just draws your eye towards the end of the enclosure. I thought that it is really like important in enclosures like that, that you have this like clear perspective uh, and while planting while adding different plants and different details i made sure that you can always see uh, this burrow so nothing is like standing in the way uh, i added some of those amazing new ferns uh, and i actually did something for the very first time uh, i just flipped this new king fern upside down if you'll do it, it just gives you this really nice texture that you can use for adding some detail and some variation to basically the substrate of your habitat to the soil and so on. It somehow looks like uh, this better version of the mulch pieces that we have in game. So I, I really wanted to add it in here and to create some more dimension and some more like interesting, you know, different textures in there. I of course added tons of more tropical plants because uh, I feel like uh, the indoor enclosures in the Elm Hill City Zoo is the only opportunity for me to use those more uh, more tropical plants as we are building in a temperate biome. Uh, so I really wanted to make it look lush, overgrown and so on. Uh, while, you know, stopping the recording, I was always checking how it all looks uh, in the complete darkness. So I was, you know, controlling uh, if we are not getting too overboard with the plants because I didn't really want that. I still wanted the kiwis to be visible, uh, like maybe not completely because they are simply shy and they prefer to probably stay out of the sight of the guests, but uh, I didn't want to make it so the guests will never see the kiwis because they will be hidden somewhere. Uh, I actually, uh, this was a bit maybe slightly inspired by one of the kiwis habitat that I actually saw uh, in the Berlin Zoo. Yes, again, <laughs> something inspired by Berlin Zoo. What a shocker. <laughs> uh, so uh, in Berlin Zoo, they also have this like uh, section in the birdhouse. I think it is called the world of birds uh, and in there you have this like a little room that you step into like you need to open the fabric like this like really thick like dark fabric and you are stepping into the complete darkness and uh, there you have like this uh, enclosure for the kiwi with only some you know uh, red lights so on and I could actually see a kiwi like just running around its enclosure uh, it was kind of hard to see it because of the darkness but still it was such a cool experience to actually see the kiwi uh, in person the animal that basically lives so 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 far uh, from the place where I live so <laughs> it is amazing that we can go to the zoos and just simply see the animals that we won't be able to see otherwise. What I also forgot to mention is that at the very beginning of the video you could see me adding those emissive panels from the Twilight Pack. Uh, they simply are such a cool thing because they simply make the windows uh, see through only from one side so from the inside of the building uh, they are completely dark so we cannot see anything and the light doesn't come into the building so it was perfect for the nocturnal section and from the outside you can see normally everything that is inside so it is totally an insane and uh, such a like cool thing for the nocturnal houses and so on. What I added in the enclosure as well were a, a lot of different decals uh, to you know again add some texture on the ground i added some of those liana branches on the uh, on the floor to make it look a bit more interesting uh, i added the leaves from the uh, tro tropical pack yeah from there from tropical pack i am adding them a lot recently to my habitats because i think that this is also something cool that makes the ground a bit more interesting especially in those indoor areas uh, what i also did was create the custom 
some lights for uh, for this enclosure. Those are the lights that will uh, be, be simply lit uh, during the night for the plants and for the animals so that they think it's the day. Uh, and I also added those uh, red lights uh, on the floor uh, that you'll see in the cinematics and so on. I also added amazing, amazing vents uh, by Haribo. This is a really cool blueprint that you can find on the workshop. Uh, so if you like to use them yourself, like those pipes, the ventilation pipes, I don't really know how they are called in English, uh, but if you like to use them, I'll put the link down in the description. They are such an amazing piece for those indoor uh, habitats or simply interiors of their buildings. Uh, and then I focus on doing like the front. So uh, we created like this window where the guests will be able to see the animals from. Uh, so I wanted to make it slightly more interesting by added, adding some wood, wooden panels, wood and so on. And I did the same thing for the deaf others. So uh, the two enclosures are simply cohesive. They look the same and so on. Uh, off the camera, I also added some info informations uh, like info boards. Uh, I created this really cool pattern on a wall using the new pieces from the Oceania pack. I think that they look really cool on this wall, especially in these darker colors. Before I also added the implied doors for the stuff so that the keepers will be able to go inside and clean the indoor area and to feed animals and so on. Uh, the actual gate, the in-game gate to the habitat will be hidden in the rock formation uh, outside, so you won't really see them. I created like my own custom doors also outside uh, because again you guys often ask me where are the gates where uh, how the keepers are entering and so on uh, I am trying to hide them somewhere uh, recently so uh, they are hidden inside of the rock wall right now you can see me creating the entrance to the Oceania nights so uh, I wanted to use some fabric some curtains uh, that the guests will have to like move you know to enter this little section uh, this is something that that I took directly from Berlin Zoo. I went through, I think, all the fabrics that we have in the game that are uh, available. For example, we have this Indian theme and they are out of rugs and different, I don't know, curtains and stuff like that. We have uh, the the ones that came, the marquee, I think, that came with the Euro, but, Euro pack, but nothing was fitting in there. And in the end, I decided to create my own custom curtains because I couldn't find a suitable piece. I created those curtains using those small pieces from the tropical pack. Uh, I think that they look really cool, but maybe they look a bit too theatrical, like a curtain in a theater or something, but they still look like a fabric. They still look like simply a material that you would be able to move and so on by your hands. So in the end, I'm quite happy with them, but maybe uh, they create a bit too much drama, you know, with this like very theatrical like look and so on. And after doing the curtains, we'll actually focus on the outer part. So we will use the uh, our normal rock walls to create the background of the habitat and we'll use the same fences as we did for the quokas. I wanted to make the outdoor habitat similar to the outdoor habitats that we already had in here so the one for the Tasmanian devils uh, and the one for Quokas uh, because I want this whole area this whole building basically to be cohesive uh, and in the end I think that I was able to achieve that I really like this outdoor habitat you know after creating already two uh, similar ones uh, it was so quick because I simply used the same uh, the same plants I used the same techniques and same textures and so on uh, and it was really like pleasant to build and I really like the final product I also really like the sight lines that we have in this habitat and I am very very happy with the shape and all of that the outdoor section is actually the place where the kiwis will have all their food enrichment because this is the only like section where the keepers will be able to go into I really wanted to include the forage box in here because I 
think that the texture of the forage box uh, will create something really interesting in here. We'll do add simply another texture to uh, the, the ground of the habitats. And as you guys know, I pay a lot of attention to the different textures and so on. Uh, and I actually did some really cool techniques to hide it, to blend it into the whole uh, habitat, like using, of course, the terrain tools, but also uh, the rocks, the plants and so on. And the animals will be still able to use it. You guys often ask me how I do that. The key is to, uh, I think, turn off the uh, terrain collision and the animals terrain something <laughs> in, the, in the options of your game. Uh, but there's a really cool tutorial actually on YouTube on how to do it by Pacha Kamak. So uh, if you guys would like to see, this is called, I think, how to hide the enrichment items in Planet Zoo. Uh, I will put the link down in the description and on the screen so you can see that because uh, he gives you some really cool like examples on how you can hide enrichment like this. And this is basically what I did in here. We'll of course add a lot of different plants, rocks, decals, leaves and stuff like that as always. And while we are doing all that, let me give you guys some fun facts about our little brown kiwis. So the kiwis belong to the ratites family uh, and they are the smallest members of this family and other animals, other birds that belong to this family are uh, ostriches, uh, emus, uh, rias and the cassowaries and this is quite crazy to think that such a small bird is actually closely related to a huge emu. The kiwi has the second largest egg to body size relation uh, of any bird. The first one on the list is the, of course the ostrich. Uh, the ostriches they have massive eggs uh, and the kiwis they also have big eggs compared to their body size. They are of course native to New Zealand, the North uh, Island brown kiwi is native to only the North Island of New Zealand. Kiwis dig burrows rather than building nests and they do it with their strong toes and claws and they are named after the sound they make. So they may make this shrieky half scream sound that uh, sounds like kiwi kiwi. They have excellent hearing and their ears are so well developed that they can easily be seen through its head feathers. Kiwis uh, of course cannot fly, but their wings are so small that you can cannot actually see them. They are only an inch long and they are hidden in their feathers. That's why kiwis look like a fairy balls rather than birds. Kiwis don't have hollow bones. Most flying birds have hollow bones to minimize weight and make flight possible, but kiwis bones are filled with marrow like those of mammals. And one more interesting thing is that kiwis are the only birds with nostrils at the top of their beaks. And they use those nostrils uh, to smell for food, so they sniff out near the ground for uh, the invertebrates, seeds, fruit and small animals. Uh, they actually don't eat things like leaves or green parts of plants, they only eat fruits. So uh, you can make sure that you can basically be reassured that the, uh, you know, the plants in your habitats are safe when you are building for the kiwis, they won't eat them, so this is really cool for for me and for my habitats because they are uh, so large, both the inside and the outside part. And with that being said, the habitat for the kiwi is almost done, uh, so we need to say our goodbyes. Next time in the Elm Hill City Zoo, probably the next episode will be out next week, uh, we will finish the, the Wonders of Oceania, we'll do some finishing touches, we'll work on the interior and so on, and we'll do the tour of the entire building, so I hope you guys are excited. Okay guys, thank you so much for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please consider to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it, ring the bell if you want to be notified every time I upload a new video, and if you'd like to support the channel a little bit extra, you can do it with the join button down below. Thank you guys so much for watching, have a wonderful day, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys!